SGC here and today's movie review is Outrage Beyond aka Outrage 2. So as the crazy ending of what happened to Otomo and his entire family, now we have a new plot and it talks about a lot more cop action and different families. We have a Korean family, a rival huge family to the Kato family. So going back to directors. Again, directed by Takashi Kitano and also starring himself. We have a pretty big cast and I will just put it below. So the story itself is pretty interesting because it starts off with the detective of the anti-corruption unit and they just deal with things and you see how they're dealing with the families as Kato and Shihara are gaining more and more momentum and more money and it actually feels that where is it going because because the plot doesn't even see an otamu for a while so anyway so otamu gets his gang together again he he wrecks havoc and that's pretty much the plot so what i like about this film for sure you can see a more building of what was established in the first film where it was just family yakuza hierarchy like I said in my first review and this time they're adding detective stuff as to how the detectives are seeing this and how detective Kotaoka is really into the grimes and really working things to just really mess with these Yakuza families and to really keep you guessing as to what's really gonna happen and I think that's the biggest thing here is that you really do not know where it's gonna go because it seems like Kato and Nishihara are so big, yet Otomo is so, like, he just came out of jail, he didn't die, and yet he he's here. So that's the biggest thing. As it grows bigger, it contains itself well. It doesn't get really that overwhelming. You get the cast well. You know where they're coming from, and you can see just the difference between the Kato family and interaction between the other families. And it's just, just the brutality of Ishihara is just crazy because it just deals with him really hunting down Otomo and I just really was sort of weary about the intensity and the brutality that was lost from the first movie. I feel that there was no personal vendetta here but rather it was a gang up on this old dude that just came out of jail. But afterwards watching it a bit more and seeing things pick up it was just like wow. This regard of human life in this movie is ridiculous. I don't know how many people died in this film but just the way that they got killed and just snuffed was just pretty intense. You got the gang of like killers who were just ruthless, did not flinch at all and just wiped out so many people. That was pretty crazy and I think that's the brutality that was different from the first movie. The first movie was all personal while this one is just like hiring outside helpers just to wipe everything out and how it ended was just pretty nice too the it felt a very complete now that Kao Taoka gets what he deserves sort of thing and he, whatever happens to him is just gonna be interesting for sure and just to see how how Otamo and Kimura would work together that was the one thing that I sort of was sort of huh why is Otamo working with Kimura? And Kimura seems very left field, yet they worked well together and then they got the other syndicate to help them out and that's how it happened. So there was some slight story issues, but I would say comparing this to the first film, the, the, the scope of the story got a lot bigger and they were dealing with a lot of things and there's a lot of backstabbing which was so intense. And I would say the backstabbing and scope really was, you know, where else could they go? Because it was so personal brutality and vendetta and then it grew up to here and it's just different style of brutality. Like shootouts were pretty more intensive compared to the first one and the backstabbing was intense. And you really were guessing what's going to happen next and I really enjoyed that. What did I not like? I would say sometimes it felt... Like I said, Ishihara was... Like, this entire sequel sort of felt like a knockoff, like a redone. Because Otamo wasn't really key here again. Because his characterization, again, is using the entire scope of the story where it dealt with how these Yakuza worked and, and the fallout and what was happening to these subordinates that were trying to get someone else to retire and the leadership falling apart. And it was just that. So, I guess... I, I wanted to know more about Otamo, but I didn't get what I wanted, but it's okay. 
I can really see that he his his commitment to his cause, like to bring down the Kato syndicate was really up there. And also reading online, there has been talks about how the producers want him to make a third film, and I would be totally up for it. Cause I don't know with how Outrage ended, I did not really see a sequel happening. But the fact that it Outrage Beyond happened was pretty cool. So if they can cook up something else for the last one, that would be pretty awesome as well. So I look forward to whatever does come out. But if it doesn't, it I think Beyond did well. And yeah, like I said, it, it, the scope is a lot bigger. Brutality is different in the sense of comparing it to the first one. It was still awesome Yakuza film, though sometimes you might feel that it, it, it wasn't as close and personal. Because the scope was so much bigger and it wasn't about just the Yakuza, but rather the police force and Korean triads and all that stuff. Anyway, totally check it out if you haven't. If you've seen Outrage, you should ch check out the sequel because it's not a bad sequel for sure. And that is all for this movie review of Outrage Beyond. See ya.